Hello everyone, welcome again to Yamhem Educa Mix TV 25. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you so much. So now we're going to talk about the early relations with Arabia. In the ancient times, Arab missionaries and traders came to the Philippines. So we have already our connection with the Arab uh, people. In the middle of the 14th century, according to the historians, the Tuan Mashaika, a Muslim trader from Malaysia, brought Islamic faith in Sulu. He was mentioned to have established the first Muslim community in the archipelago. Islam means submission to the will of God. And Muslim means one who surrenders to God. Ibig sabihin, di natin pwedeng tawagin ang isang tao na Muslim kapag hindi siya nag-follow ng lahat ng panuntunan ng isang Islam. Tawagin natin sila sa kanilang tribo. So in 1380, Karim ul Makdum, the first Arab visitor, came to Sulu from Mecca, Saudi Arabia. So he's the next mentioned in the Tarsilas. So he spread Islam and built the first mosque of Simunul Sulu. He won many converts, particularly at Buansa or the ancient capital of Sulu. In 1390, Rahab Baginda, a Muslim prince from Minangkabau, Sumatra, landed at Buwanza. As I said, it is the ancient capital of Sulu. He overcomes native opposition because his warriors battled with firearms, the first to be used in war on the Philippine soil. So we have the stage of Makdumin. So this stage of Makdumin is a period of openness to Islam resulted to adaptations to the Islamic faith with the becoming of the missionaries in Sulu, an event simultaneous with the work of other missionaries in Java, Indonesia. So yan yung stage of Makdumin natin. So na dyan na nag-start yung pag-accept sa uh, Islam religion. In 1450, Sharif ul Hasim, or popularly known as Shayid Abu Bakar, another Arab missionary, went to Buansa, Sulu, from Mohore, Malacca. So he married the Princess of Sulu, Princess Paramisuli, and founded the Sultanate of Sulu. Abu Bakar founded the Sulu Sultanate in the same year after his father's-in-law's death. He organized the government patterned after that of the Arabian Caliphate and promulgated the first Sulu Code of Law. He later transformed the Muslim Tausugs into a powerful army. In 1475, So we have Sharif Muhammad Kabungsuan, an Arab trader, landed at Cotabato and conquered the valley. So he married the local princess and founded the Sultanate of Maguindanao. He converted the overpowered inhabitants to Islam. Those who refused to accept the new faith fled to the mountains. They became the present-day Blaans, Manobos, Subanons, and other pagan Filipinos. Next, we have Shat Sain. He was one of the Muslim traders from Borneo who introduced Islam in the town of Balayan, Batangas. They entered the Philippines subsequently, shortly before Magellan's arrival in 1521. Through the efforts of the traders, the spread of Islam was accelerated. So, they are able to reach Mindoro, Manila, and Pampanga, aside from Batangas. In 17th century, Alawi Balpake, an Arab from Sarawak, Borneo, he was the last recorded Muslim missionary that brought Islamic faith in the country. He introduced Islam in the northern Mindanao and the Lanao Lake region. After which, he moved to the island of Basilan and became its first Muslim sultan. And in 1956, his grave was discovered in Tagima, Basilan. The spread of Islam occurred in two waves. The first was the expansion of the Islam out of Arabia to the Middle East, North Africa, Spain, Central Asia, and the latter parts of Eastern Europe. While the second wave brought Islam towards Sub-Saharan Africa and Southeast Asia. The introduction of Islam in the Philippines is part of the second wave. That's why we have our Arabic heritage. Arabic culture has influenced our religion. 
politics and also our social life. In terms of religion, they gave the Muslim Filipinos the Islam religion, which professes monotheism or in the belief of a single God and teaches that Muhammad was the last and the most important in a series of prophets. In politics, the Arabs introduced the sultanate form of government and laws. The title of Sultan or King, Raha or Ir, Dayang or Princess, and Kali or Judge came from the Arabs. So we have some examples of Muslim customs like polygamy o yung pag-aasawa ng hanggang apat para sa mga lalaki, divorce, and also yung pilgrimage to Mecca. Islam advocates that all Muslims belong to one community, the Ummah, regardless of ethnic background. Islam believes that man has to treat all God's creation with kindness and compassion. And they have the five pillars of Islam, and these are the shahada or the profession of faith. They believe that there is no God but Allah and Muhammad is the messenger of God, which is a prerequisite for membership in the Muslim community. Second is the salat or the ritual prayer, wherein the adult Muslim has to implore the Almighty five times a day facing Mecca. Next is zakat or yung tinatawag natin na alms giving which is the obligatory giving of 148 of one's income to the needy or religious cause to purify one's wealth and attain salvation. Next is Hajj, or the pilgrimage to Mecca, which is a mandatory once-in-a-lifetime trip to the house of the God, or the Kaaba, where the title of Hajj shall be given to a Muslim who has performed this pilgrimage. And next is Saum, or yung fasting, which is done during the lunar month of Ramadan or the ninth month of the Arabic calendar. Ramadan commemorates the Holy Quran's revelation to Prophet Muhammad. And Muslim Filipinos follow the Muslim way of life. They also follow Arab calendars and holidays. They celebrate Ramadan, the Muslim holy festival of fasting and prayer. Some of famous epic poems, tales, and plays are of Muslim origin. Like Moro Moro, the play of the Tagalogs. Darangan, the epic poem of Maranao. And Singkil, it is a royal Muslim dance of the Maranao. Some Tagalog words have Arabic origin, like alak or wine, apo or old man, bukas or tomorrow, pilat or scar, salamat or thanks, and sulat for letter. So after the Arabs, there are also other countries that came to the Philippines. So we have also early relations with other Asians. Our early ancestors also had contacts with Borneo, Malaya, Malacca, Thailand or Siam, Cambodia or Cambodia, and Indonesia. Filipinos traded with these Asian nations and sometimes settled over there. In 1515, the Filipinos had small colony at Dingding, Malacca in Malaysia. They were prosperous merchants who were called Luzon men by local natives. This was their trading base for Malaya, Borneo, and Indonesia. When the Spaniards came to the Philippines, they met foreign traders. These foreigners told them we had business contacts with Thailand, India, China, Malaya, and Indonesia. So that's all what we have with our early relations with Arabia.
I hope meron na naman kayong natutunan dito sa ating Yamhem Educamix TV 25. So, I'm your teacher May na nag-iiwan na... There's no elevator to success. You have to take the stairs. So, dapat dahan-dahan lang. Makakarating din tayo sa ating paroroonan. Thank you so much. Until next time.